Nine unit, nine units down. All right, nine units down. Quick survey here of these nine units. What do we think has been uh, the toughest ones for us? Well, that's a lot. That was that's been a couple of units. Like all the fa facts, and, like all the facts about it, like centroid. Ortho center unit, quadrilaterals. What's that, Dan? I'm just going to say everyone's going to about to say circles when we're done with this unit. Okay, and here's the reason why. Everything is brand new. Well, not everything, but a lot of the vocabulary, a lot of the theorems are going to be brand new. And a lot of you guys just, most of the time, and I don't blame you, you rely on what you did in middle school and it gets you through. Okay, you work a little extra hard to get some of the stuff you don't understand. But this new unit, this new circle unit, everything's new. We're going to reintroduce statements, reasons, proofs. I know you're going to be happy about that. Yep. Uh, we are going to more constructions. This is the last unit that involves constructions. Uh, but it's a lot of new vocab. It is, and I, I feel like I say this all the time, but I'm serious about this one. This is this unit is not for the lazies. All right, you're gonna get yourself buried right away. All right, if you don't stay on top of the homework and check it. All right, so we'll see how it goes. This homework, by the way, due Wednesday. All right, I'm not gonna check it tomorrow. You got your test. All right, first thing we got to deal with circumference. I don't know. I've heard of that part before. Heard that term before. What's that dealing with circumference? It's the distance around the circle. It's basically the perimeter of the circle. Because perimeter, you like add up all the sides and the circle's like, hi, I have no sides. Okay, so there is no perimeter. We call it circumference, right? Okay, we call it circumference. Couple pieces though. I'm sure you've heard of these pieces before. There are different segments in a circle, different segments. There's this one segment that starts at the center and the other end point is on the circle. We call that the radius. If I have multiple in the circle, I call it radii. All right, R-A-D-I-I, -I, if you weren't used to that. That's a segment, starts at the center, other endpoints on the circle. All right, well, what if both endpoints are already on the circle? Well, it depends what we call that. If that segment goes through the center, we call it the diameter. What's the relationship between the radius and the diameter? Radius, half of the diameter, diameter is twice the radius. Okay, what if it doesn't go through the center, though? But both of the endpoints are on the circle. We call that a chord. I don't know. Are you familiar with that one? Okay. A chord is a segment in a circle. Endpoints are on the circle, but it does not go through the center. Chord. Diameter. Special fact I'd like you to have down. Diameter is a chord. Not only is it a chord, it's the longest chord in a circle. You are not going to find any chord longer than the diameter. So the diameter is the longest chord chord in a circle. One other fact. How do you name a triangle? By its vertices. How do you name a, a quadrilateral? Any polygon. Well, there are, hi, I have no vertices, so how do I name it? By its center. You name it by its center. So this one would be called, in this case, circle C. Yes, you name a circle by its center. So if we start talking about circle M, oh, M's got to be the center in that diagram. All right, a couple questions for you honors kids. Oh, good start. Good start. Yeah, good start. Good start. Good start.
All right, we ready? And I could, you're probably going to get this. The reason being is you need to do it. <laughs> you need to do this stuff. But of course, that's the way it doesn't work for me. So, star. Curtains. Cubes. Fades. Flips. Slide right, slide left, pinwheel, genies, shatters. Okay, everybody ready? What do we got? Pinwheels. Pinwheels or Promethean Man? Pinwheels. Here we go. Mm, the old spin. Huh? No, that's not. Don't even try it. Not even pinwheels. That's when it, each individual one spins. Yes. No. No. Okay. I guess I we should add spin in now. So. All right. Guess we got to put it on now. When are two circles congruent? Congruent to us, same size, same shape. All circles are the same shape, though. So that doesn't help us. Same, go ahead, Maggie. Same diameter, and I'll even make it even smaller. I don't even, same radii, yep. Two circles are congruent when they have the same radii, when they have congruent radii. Okay, when they have the same radii, same radii length. How about that? It's a little bit more professional. When are they similar? Now think about it. I know Ken just said, oh, when the radii are in the same ratio. Well, aren't they always going to be? Because you only have two circles. So if one radii is two, the other is five, they're in a ratio of two to five. Right? I'm not, I can't measure anything else other than the radii. So in conclusion, some of you are already saying it. All circles are similar. Your grades? <laughs> got, a little, got a little dirt there. Okay. Next thing, concentric circles. Two circles or more that have the same center. How about some real life examples here? Okay, donut. Yep. Concentric circles, oh. circles with the same thing. <laughs> Onion or the tree, somebody said in my other class last week, if you cut a tree and look at the rings there. Cake. Watermelon. <laughs> okay, I got you, I got you. Like the green core and the red stuff, yep. Anything else? I didn't think these would be so unique. I, the dartboard, yes, that's common. Yep, dartboard. We tell time on it. Clock. Okay. All right. If the eyeball was round, yep. Okay, we all good. Concentric circles. All right, concentric circles. Circles that share the same center. That was shatter. Know your darn slide changes, please, before you start bringing it. Okay, here we go. A couple words that are going to come up more and more this unit. 
an inscribed polygon. That's a polygon in a circle where all the vertices lie on the circle. So what I want you to do right now, because you're going to do your own diagram, is draw yourself a circle. And I want to see just by the definition here if you can inscribe a polygon. I don't care what the polygon is. Okay, I don't care what the polygon is, but make sure it's inscribed correctly. Please make sure all your vertices are touching the circle. We shouldn't have a vertice hanging out in the middle of the circle anywhere. Okay. So everyone have an inscribed polygon, whether it be a triangle, quadrilateral, however, however many sides you have. All right, but what, I know the polygon's inscribed because it's inside, but what do I call the circle that's located outside? That's my next vocabulary term, which is circumscribed, all right? The one on the outside is the one that's circumscribed. The one on the inside is inscribed. Could I switch these and put the circle inside? Yes, but now the circle would be inscribed and my polygon would be circumscribed. Okay, so whatever's on the outside, whatever's on the outside is circumscribed and whatever's on the inside is inscribed. But the biggest piece here, those vertices better be touching the circle. All right. And finally, we get to the circumference business today. All right. You as a student have a choice. I don't care which formula you remember. It's not on the formula sheet, so you got to remember one. Whether it be pi times d, d4, diameter length, or you remember 2 pi r, which would be 2 times pi times radius. All right, before we get going here, can we please have some calculating devices out? That would be great because we may have to round eventually. As a class, I'd like to use the same formula every time. Do we have a class decision here? Pi D or two pi R here? How many pi Ds? How many pi Ds do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many two pi Rs do I have? Okay, looks like it will have the old two pi R. That's fine. Okay, okay, two pi R, you got it. Also, just a little uh, elementary, Way to remember the circumference formula. I don't know if you've ever heard of this before, using the pi D one. <sighs> Coffee pie donuts. If you're using it on your own. <laughs> Coffee pie donuts. <laughs> or... When we get into area unit, that's the area for a circle, then we can go cherry pies are delicious, apple pies are too. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're clever, us mathematicians. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go with two pi r, you got it. All right, so find the circumference of this circle here, leave your answer in terms of pi, meaning, hey, your answer should have a pi in it. We're not hitting the pi button on the calculator. Your answer should have pi in it. So if we're going to use 2 pi r, what did I give you in this circle? Radius, it's coming from the center, so we call it the radius is 16. So 2 pi times 16. If we left pi as it was, 2 times 16. So the answer here, 32 pi. Please don't be an embarrassment and write pi 32. Yes, it is the same, but do we say x6 or do we say 6x? Okay, so 32 pi. All right, let's go backwards. Can you get me the diameter and the radius if I give you the circumference? Okay, you guys want to use 2 pi r, you got it. 
I, I'm actually kind of glad that you did it just for this example in general of the other. Anyway, I would have went pi d myself, but uh, <laughs> circumference 106.4. So let's plug that in for C. So it looks like you guys are going to be solving for the radius here. Okay, we got to talk. Okay, no matter what you're using, you got to stop and focus in here. How am I going to solve for the radius? You're going to divide both sides by 2 pi. Totally agree, no issues. My issue is going to be is when you use the calculator. Okay? Use a fraction template, and you don't have to worry about this. If in the calculator you do 106.4, use the division sign, and divide by 2 pi, you're not going to get the correct answer. Here's why. Your calculator is programmed to do division left to right and multiplication just like PEMDAS used to be. So what your calculator is going to do is 106.4 divided by 2, get a number, then multiply it by pi. So if you don't use your fraction template, you want to use the division sign instead, this 2 pi has got to be in parentheses. Please remember that. Okay? Bottom line, how about you, if you had got one, use a fraction template. I don't know why kids are opposed to that. It drives me nuts. And we are rounding this to the nearest hundredth, so our radius here will be... Sixteen point nine three. I also ask you guys to find the diameter for me to the nearest hundredth. And diameter, what are we looking at? 33.87. I am going to come down a lot harder here than I've been this year just because it really hasn't come up, but we're missing something. Units. If the problem has units, I do expect your answer to have units. All right. All good before we get a little tougher. Okay, let's get tougher. I got a square with a side length of nine inscribed. So where's it located? Inside circle J. What's circle J telling me? What's J telling me? Center point is J. Yep, find the, okay, hold on. Exact circumference. When I see this word exact, I am looking for no decimals. Leave it in radical fraction form for me. All right, leave it in radical fraction form. All right, so let's get a little diagram done here. I got my circle. I'm gonna put a square inside so all vertices are touching the circle. And it's circle J, so I know J's in the middle. And each side is nine, because it's a square. You guys want to use two pi r, you got it? Your move, how do I find the radius? How do I find the radius here? Well, if I don't, might as well just try to draw in, you know, if I try, hey, take a look. There's a radius, right? I don't know how that's going to help me out. That goes outside the square. Is there a radius I could draw in here, or maybe a couple of them, that may help me out knowing that that's a square and all sides are nine? What do you got back there, Sinead? So what if I do this? I got two radii there. Can I find the length of that? I, can I? What do you know about the angles in a square? Right angles. I have a right triangle. I know two sides. Here we go. 
9 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. 81 plus 81 equals C squared. What do I have there? 162? Okay, remember it said exact, so decimals aren't going to cut it for me, so you probably would want to break this down. The perfect square that goes into 162 is already on your paper. Biggest one. Nine is not the biggest one. 81 is, yes. 81 times 2. So this will be 9 radical 2. Now, I know majority says 2 pi r here. But what's the 9 radical 2? What did we just find in the circle? The diameter. So I don't think dividing it by two, then multiplying it by two again might not be the strategic way to go here. Everyone see that? Because if you want the radius, I got to divide that by two. But then when I plug it in, I'm going to end up multiplying it by two again. So we're in the same spot. So I'm just going to use pi d for this one. Teddy, settle down back there, all right? So I'm going to do pi times nine radical two. Remember exact, no sloppy decimals. You may just want to clean that up and say what instead. Nine radical two pi, nine pi radical two. If you do have the pi at the end, if you do nine radical two pi, please make darn sure that pi is nowhere near, is nowhere underneath the radical. Last thing I'm missing. Units. What do we got? Inches here? There we go. Okay. All right, a couple more. I got a center of Q at 3, negative 2, and I got point R, which the circle goes through at 7, 1. I'm going to leave you and your group to do this in a second. So does everyone see what I'm giving you? Q is the center and the circle goes through R. And I'm not at, please do not waste time getting get a compass, but take a look up here. Here's what I'm basically telling you. Here's the center. Here's a point. The circle goes through. Here's your circle. If I were to graph it in, there's your circle. How long is the diameter? Okay, how long is the diameter? Well, what's it? What's this from Q to R? What's this right here, Q to R? What do we call that? Radius, and you guys told me at the beginning of class, how's the radius and the diameter related? Multiply the radius by 2 to get the diameter. I'll let you and your group take over from there. Find the length of the diameter. And it's a whole number. There's no rounding directions here.